Hello YouTube, Marauders here, and this is the Intel Skull Canyon NUC. Now, a lot of things have been said about the graphical performance of this uh, particular NUC because it, every, the the messaging that Intel gives is that all oh, this has great graphics, you can has you can get a great gaming experience out of it. And a lot of sites have already shown there are a lot of places where you can go read stats <coughs> and benchmarks about how well the Skull Canyon performs on its own. But hell, I'm not a benchmarking person. So here's a bunch of video comparing the Xbox One and the PS4 to the Skull Canyon PC. Enjoy. Okay, so here we have Quantum Break for the Xbox One. So it's your typical triple A current gen console title. Has all the <clears throat> current gen console game bells and whistles, volumetric lighting, shadows, nice graphics. I mean, no surprises. It's exactly what you expect from a current gen uh, console game. So you can see the graphics and texture. So this is running at. 1080p, obviously. And here's the Windows 10 version of Quantum Break running. So right off the bat is that this is running at 720 because the game doesn't even allow me to select 1080 because it's complaining about insufficient VRAM on the Skull Canyon. And uh, if you're watching this at 60 frames per second, do you notice that there's some the frame rate is a bit stutter and slower than the console counterpart? And of course, there's uh, just some. It, the graphic looks a bit weird overall, since well, most most games don't aren't expecting you to run it with an Intel chipset, so I guess the optimization is a bit different. Damn. That will hurt in the morning. And here we have Earth Defense Force 4.1 on the PlayStation 4. Now this is a game about fighting giant insects. <clears throat> now I, I really like... The, the game is just stupid campy fun. I really like playing this series. Even though that, I mean, gameplay is repetitive, the, the frame rate goes to hell when there are too many ants on screen. But hey, it's about killing giant insects uh, and spiders, uh, giant robots and stuff. So yeah, I really like this game. It, it's really, it's a stupid can be fun. It's also an interesting way to test the performance since it's not particularly optimized. <laughs> the game, uh, the traditionally this game has been very buggy and stuff on the older console generation. So. We should be able to see any performance issues if there are any. And here's a Defense Force 4.1 on the PC, and immediately you can see all those flickering trees. So, this is most likely the same issue like what I mentioned previously in my last uh, Skull Canyon video. <clears throat> But of course, the tweak didn't do anything for this game, while it worked for Batman Arkham City. So the issue here seems to be that certain graphics calls, like what people use to draw flat things like the trees and the overlay in, the, in, the, in Arkham City, doesn't work so well on the, on the, on the, on the Intel graphics chipset. Again, this is basically like I mentioned previously. It's because game developers just don't expect people to play with an Intel's graphics uh, GPU. So sometimes they they don't test it and they don't optimize for the for the particular chipset. So you run into small little problems like this. <clears throat> and of course, you can still see that there's some slight performance difference. You're not getting the same performance as a PS4. So in summary, what does this tell us? Now, while the Intel Iris Pro in the Skull Canyon is amazing, has amazing performance for an integrated graphics chip, 
if you if you buy the Skull Canyon and expecting to replace a console to stand in for a console, that's not going to happen. <laughs> the thing, okay, it's a small little piece, a little computer. It is not going to outperform an actual current gen console or even a current gen video card. The Skull Canyon has a very distinct role in that it's not meant to replace your game console but rather it's supposed to act as a de deliver a very powerful multi-purpose computer in an extremely small package so you could on, on one hand you can use it to do video editing graphic editing and yet you can still use it to play games on the side now it won't give you the it's not going to give you did it give you any current gen console performance but it for what it is as an integrated graphics it gives you fantastic performance and if you can uh, compromise on the graphics quality and resolution you you will be very surprised with the results uh, for example the easiest thing is instead of running everything at 1080, just run it at 720, and you find that you can actually get you can actually get a very visually appealing uh, gameplay experience from it. So, for something that's small enough to fit in a rather large pocket, that's actually amazing. And you have to realize that it, you have a Core i7 in the Skull Canyon. So it's something that you can use for video editing, for graphics editing and after you're finished with your work, you can use it to play some games and in particular, I would say it will most likely run pretty much most of the indie titles on a PC and if you really want to play AAA uh, PC game releases Again, I'm pretty sure if you dump the resolution down to 720 and then you lower the graphics settings, this should be able to handle games at a pretty acceptable experience. So, in summary, as long as you're not expecting to replace a console with the Skull Canyon and you're just looking for an all-in-one system, that is small and compact, yep, the Skull Canyon is your choice. If you're thinking that the Skull Canyon is going to be some sort of magical console replacement, no, you need to look elsewhere. Okay, so this is Marauders, I will see you all in the next video.